Hello everybody, welcome back to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler and this is Modern Merfolk. As you might have guessed, I'm pretty excited about Rivals of Ixalan hitting and this is why Merfolk, Mistbinder, we have all the lords we want in Merfolk now. This is great. I don't think for what it's worth that this makes the deck insanely better or anything, but it is very good. Uh, and you get hands like this. Look at this hand. We have three lords, a one drop, a card advantage spell. This is just incredible to look at. And you know what? I... I'm pretty excited. So here we go. We're going to lead things off with Kamina's Speaker here. Uh, we'll find out what our opponent's on, but I know that what we're doing is going to be pretty good here. All right, wooded foothills, huh? The old no art wooded foothills, I guess, Magic Online. All right. Fetched a basic forest and noble hierarch. Okay. So, uh, wow, all right. It's hard to say, given this, uh, this start from our opponent, forest and uh, Hierarch, but it seems like a matchup where we're not necessarily going to need all of the, excuse me, all of the, this, we're not going to need the card advantage. We have four lords in our hand. Let's just play the lords and kill our opponent really fast. We're on the play. Let's, let's take advantage of that fact and just beat down here. I think we'll probably be on track for a turn four kill here. This is why you play the deck for hands like this. Although for what it's worth, especially in the mono blue versions of the deck, I actually think that the lords are some of the worst cards in the deck because you basically want one on a given board. You don't necessarily want a handful of them. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> you don't necessarily want a handful of door, uh, of lords, but uh, in this version, now that you just have a critical mass of them, that works out a little better, <laughs> as you can see here. Uh, it is tempting to take a turn off and play this, but I'm not going to. We just have too much pressure to do anything but attack, I think. Yeah, the, the, the shrink, and this is why blue-green is necessarily better than mono-blue, although it's a lot more aggressive, aggressive, it can tempo better, it's got a lot of things going for it. You know, but it uses a lot of some of the trickiness that the the old, the other, the mono-blue version can do. You don't have Master of Waves, you don't have as many cool tricky three-drops. Um, this is sort. This is much more of an aggro deck with sort of some token interaction, and it's just a little different. Um, given this board, not sure what our opponent's up to. They're going to have some sort of collected company. I think I just have to play and attack. I mean, let's stick to the plan here. Get in there for seven. You know, we're spreading seeds away from winning. I assume our opponent, yeah, they, they're going to block with Voice of Resurgence here, get a big Voice of Resurgence. Uh, depending on what they hit off Collected Company, it could be bad for us. Or, you know, Court of Calling or or whatever they're sitting on over there. You know, they probably have a combo. Uh, we could die to a combo. That said, we, you know, we're doing all right here. This That's not too bad for us if that's what our opponent has. It is a large elemental token, so that's not ideal, but... Okay, well... This is the turn to make a choice. Do I play another Lord and slam the Kamina Speaker in there? Probably not. They're just going to block with the Voice of Resurgence. I think we do just, you know, and given the what our opponent had with all these these voices, maybe it would have been a little better to just slow it down, uh, play the Vile and the Curse Catcher last turn. I'm not sure. We were able to put a lot of pressure on our opponent here. Um, now they have four mana and we have Curse Catcher for Collected Company or whatever, and we can try to build up to the Regery here. It's just abs and company, so I don't want to say this is great for us, but we have you know some some good outs here. We can also hit uh, a spreading seas or something to win. Okay, coming on in with the the voice, I accept. That's fine. As a scavenging ooze. Okay, well that's not bad. Our opponent gets to gain some life from that. It's a big elemental token, that's for sure. We can also make things difficult for our opponent if we draw a land and can play this uh, this regery. <laughs> Not quite a land. Uh, may as well play the Lord, though. Again, I mean, now we don't even have an attack, but this is fine. Um, now I'll block. You know, I didn't... I, okay, well, here comes... Uh, I guess the cord. Cord for three? That's probably not good for us. Cord for two, huh? Okay, I guess we might be getting comboed. Here comes Devoted Druid. 
If the last card in their hand is Reserve Remedies, uh, they still actually have to have a way to win, to win after that. Now, our team is, is going to be pretty large, so... Safi. Uh-oh. That's not good. <laughs> I assume they have some sort of sack outlet and get us with Fiend Hunter here. I don't even know if that would work. Uh, I guess it would. They'd be able to exile it, but it would get one back anyways. They have another court. So our opponent just actually had an insane draw here to be able to, to stack up against what we were doing. Voices are the perfect roadblock. Right, there comes the sack outlet. Okay, so... You know, this isn't good for us, but I also wouldn't say that it's the end of the world. Uh, I guess that kills us, huh? Maybe I was supposed to uh, curse catcher the cord. Well, they had a pretty perfect hand, I'd say that. I think this is how this works, right? They Saffy to something, then you sack it to this. I, I think they get infinite tokens out of this, so I think we have to hit a spreading season win. I think that's how this works. I have a couple shots at it here. All right, so yeah, what they're going to do is they'll sack... Uh, sack... Voice of Resurgence to Viscerous here. Get a token. Uh, sack Rallier. Well, Sack Safi to Rallier. No, this is just infinite. Sack Safi to ra Rallier. Rallier comes back, returns voice, but then they don't have Safi, so you just converted. So that doesn't do much. But So they do have infinite triggers where Safi can target Rallier. Rallier can sack to Viscerous here, come back. So they have infinite scries, so we're dead. Okay, so we have to hit Spreading Seas or Removal uh, because otherwise our opponent has infinite scries to put uh, the, the Blood Artist or whatever have you on top to kill us. So, all right, we'll see if we can get lucky here. I don't know if slowing down would have made any difference anyways. I mean, I tried to go fast. Uh, well, let's actually do the math. If they do that, though... I guess we get to attack with five creatures, and our opponent has five blockers. Well, you can block with everything and then do it, which leads to the same outcome, where you still have infinite scries, and you still get to untap with... Because they can actually take a hit, so you can keep your Viscerous here back. So yeah, we, we need to hit a Spreading Seas, or removal. Or a Harbinger of the Tides? One turn too late, I think, here. Well, we actually were in the end punished, I guess, for playing Silvergill. Not playing Silvergill. I always say it's the best card in the deck. That's why you play it. We actually... Well, I mean, it probably doesn't matter. I just don't think we can do anything about this here. I guess what we can do... Well, that still doesn't work. I was going to say, we can try to bounce... We, we could try to bounce Safi, uh, forcing them to go off, but that's fine. The end result of that is they still have plenty of blockers. Um, all right, I guess we just play the Lord and see what we can do. I almost flame the team in there, but... I don't think this is going to work. Our opponent has five blockers, but they just let, you know, they, like, maybe I should have just play two lords, and then they, they, well, we'd still, they'd still be able to take six and go to one. Um, I think what they will do is they won't block one of the five fives. They'll block everything else. Sack Safi to Rallier, or, you know, Sack Safi targeting Rallier. Sack Rallier to Viscerous here after blocks, and then loop and have infinite scries and put a Blood Artist on top of the deck, uh, and then repeat to the loop to kill us. That's certainly what's probably going to happen 
the thing is I actually want to see what they I and mean, I don't want to make my opponent play it out on the one hand, right? It's kind of trolly and I'm not trying to do that, but uh, on the other hand here, yeah, six block, plenty of blockers. They didn't have to worry about anything there. I want to see what their win condition is. That's the thing. I mean, it probably doesn't matter. It probably wasn't change our sideboard any. I mean, maybe they just don't. I mean, I can't imagine that after they scry to the top, scry everything that we're going to win. But they also get to eat something with scavenging news here. So they get to eat the voice and, and gain another life. So we can't even do better than that. So I suppose we'll see what happens. Yeah, opponent goes to two. Really? Okay. What I said worked, right? You sack Safi, you target Renegade Rallyer, then you sack Renegade Rallyer and it comes back and returns Safi. Yeah, that definitely is the combo. I don't know if our opponent just clicked through the instep or what, but we might have caught a break there. Really not too sure what happened, uh, but I suppose I'll take it if we can play two more Lords next turn. Okay, uh, we're in the main phase here, so they don't, in theory, even get to draw whatever they're scrying for. I have a curse catcher. I, I'm going to assume that we're still dead here. Uh, I'm just not sure exactly what's going on. I was about to scoop. I mean, I might still be... No, I'm not dead. I get a curse catcher this. Yeah, our opponent... Must have just mid-clicked through that or something. I don't know, but I will take it. <laughs> All right, dispels, please. And spell pierces... And I, I guess Relics, we'll see. Negate's pretty good as well. The problem is all of this is good. Um, probably don't need the rejuries uh, because uh, our opponent is just, you know, we're just, it's just a just a race, right? Our opponent's trying to combo. We want to stop him from comboing. Our know, Harbinger's not bad, but we'll see here. Probably cut. The spell, spell pierces and dismembers. Those are all very good. Might be able to cut a Kumina speaker. We need interaction, it seems like, more than we need just just a beat down. So we'll cut two, two of the relics. I'm going to actually cut them and cut a spell pierce and a relic, I think. Because we want, basically, they all sort of do the same thing. Um, well, actually, in general, I think relic's just the worst of, of the bunch here. Uh, because we need to hit the cords and the collected companies more than, you know, because they can give them value even outside of comboing, where the relic's basically just going to stop a combo. Uh, not not stopping anything with this hand though, except ourselves. Okay, so we'll mulligan. Opponent mulliganed as well. Well, you gotta keep it. You don't play Merfolk if you're not comfortable keeping one land hand sometimes. Scry rule sure helps, but this is not great. But it is what it is. Our opponent didn't have a one drop either. Alright. Well, Okay, let's settle in, see who gets there first. Yeah, maybe we'll get there. But at least, it, it, this is obviously bad if we don't draw another land here, but we have Relic, we have Dispel. We actually have some game, depending on what our opponent's hand is. I mean, the worst thing for us is if they just, you know, play some, some three power creatures and beat us down. But if they're on the Collect Company plan, we, we have, you know, some stuff for that. All right, so it's a Malira deck. Look at that. Never didn't have it. Uh, you know, I think I actually mess up my opponent's mana here. They might be leaning pretty hard on this black. Well, maybe not. Maybe maybe this turn I'm supposed to just play the Lord. It's so we can actually attack. Seems pretty important. Wow, snap block from our opponent there. Okay, I suppose I'm fine with that. Anafenzo. Okay. Yeah, I see. It's a duplicate piece. I understand. Ether vial, huh? All right, I accept. 
this is a turn we need to keep the spell up. And as you can see, we're, we're obviously having to slow down quite a bit here um, with this hand, but it's it's okay. You consider we didn't have, uh, you know, we, we mulled the six and had to keep a one lander here. We have good cards in the matchup, so we'll get there. But I'm not giving my opponent a chance. I'm not tapping out when I have to spell in hand and letting my opponent go off with whatever they want. Looks like there might be a collected company coming too, so we might actually get a, might get rewarded here for playing tight. Yeah, absolutely. I will dispel that. All right, put a counter on this ether vial. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Pretty nice land to hit there, as a matter of fact. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and. Well, I guess the same logic applies, right? We. We may as well just play the Relic and pass. Our opponent would have to hit Perfects off of the uh, off of the next Collected Company or whatever. Next, you know, on the other hand, it doesn't actually change much from our perspective, I suppose. I'm... I'm almost tempted to attack. I'm not going to, simply because, you know, having the island walk feels relevant. But I, I, I'm tempted because I don't think our opponent's going to trade off a combo piece. And maybe I, I just have the soul read in and attack there, but... We also get, I want to get value out of the Harbinger. All right. Well, this is this is probably fine. This this does the most, I think, to set our opponent back because uh, we take the three here, and now we don't have to worry about not having relic up for the rest of the game. Intrepid hero. Well, okay. Guess I just won't build my team up that much. <laughs> this is this is what I might be worried about. Our opponent's just playing this mid range plan here. Let's see what we draw. Curse Catcher is reasonable. Go ahead and cut our opponent off black mana. Oh, Merfolk Mistbinder, okay. Uh, well, you know what? I think if our opponent had more combo pieces or had something to kill us, they would have played it. They did not. Now we're getting beat down on board, so we may as well play the Curse Catcher. Um... It, one, also our opponent has to have land. Well, they have land. Now they have to have land and a payoff. Otherwise, Curse Catcher also, you know, takes them off of just, just casting Collected Company there. Well, I guess it's not true because of the Hierarch anyways, but. Okay, I think I take this hit. Well, maybe not. Maybe I just bounce it. Yeah, I'm fine just bouncing it. I think our opponent, well, they might have. They might not have. We're going to go for it, though. I don't want to take this damage. You know, on the one hand, if our opponent had a creature, they might have played a pre-combat to bolster, but you wouldn't have been bolstering the intrepid hero anyway, so I guess that isn't super relevant. But I, I don't really want to take damage here. You know, we're not going to catch our opponent off guard or anything. We just need to not take damage because we're trying to race. Unfortunately for us, and this also works out because when we play the Merfolk Mistbinder, it turns the Intrepid Hero on uh, in terms of killing our Harbinger of the Tides. Yep, this is a real powerful Noble Hierarch, though. Or I guess the Intrepid Hero itself is going to get pumped again. All right, well, it looks like we're racing. Oh, well, yep. Okay, there we go. Looks like we are racing here. <laughs> That's certainly what's happening. Uh, I would not like to use this. I would like to draw something good. Island, not exactly what we were looking for. All right, I guess we get in for five here. Uh, given that our opponent now has no cards in hand, well, if I was going to do that, I should have done it pre-combat, I suppose. I'm still going to. I'm going to crack this relic. Our opponent has no cards in hand. They don't have a combo. 
Uh, so we may as well just draw, see what we can find here. And we found another relic. So if we, it depends what our opponent attacks with here. If they uh, attack with Intrepid Hero, if they keep Intrepid Hero back, that's bad for us. So, all right, just coming in for three, that's no problem because this isn't even something to worry about. That's that's not enough damage for us to care. All right, gonna go ahead and pop this. Another Ether Ball. Okay. <laughs> well, that works. Right? I guess it doesn't. So I could have played it and then played another, but either way, I'm leaning for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is not lethal. So we may as well just get in with these again. And this is just lethal next turn. Intrepid Hero is a nice sideboard against Marfolk, actually. Especially this uh, tropical version here. Uh, but now our opponent is is pretty dead. They need a an answer to Lord of Atlantis specifically. Although to be fair, they have a lot of good draws. I will play the Mistbinder at the end of the turn here because we're trying to overload. Uh, you know, our opponent will be able to to shoot down the Harbinger at that point. But the, excuse me. Oh, okay. Well, this looks like a desperation attack. So that's a good sign for us, I would say. Yeah, just going to block the cutthroat, I believe. Well, may as well take the combo piece off the field. I don't see a reason to block those two. We'll protect our island walk here. At all costs. <laughs> and they do have a, a card here. Yeah. Collect a company? Or cord? Or nothing? It is a collected company, I imagine. No, it's a cord for two, huh? Uh, I'm not sure what cord for two gets them. I guess we'll find out. Okay, well, it'll bolster something. It will bolster whatever they want, but it won't bolster for lethal, and it'll only make it a trade with the Mistbinder. So I guess I let it happen. I'm not sure what can go wrong here, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, this Curse Catcher did some work here. They, If they could have, uh, you know, if they had one more mana and could have gone, for, you know, courted for, say, a Fiend Hunter... It's a Safi, okay. Is this a combo? This isn't a combo. I think this is just to keep... This is just to, I guess, force a trade. Which doesn't do anything. So our opponent will get a trigger off the Zulaport Cutthroat and go to four, but they should still die on our turn. Interesting. If they had that available to them... I guess you're just dead. Yeah, you have to attack to try to get some Zulaport cut. I think they should. Our opponent should have been more aggressive this game, and I am happy with how we timed our our Harbinger of the Tides. Yeah, this puts us at four. Our opponent at four, uh, but they should just be dead on the crackback here because they have nothing that can, you know, get through our. They don't have anything that can they can get through this curse catcher we have, so which one are there? But they're not scooping, so I guess I'll play like they can. Alright, well let's send the team on in. Uh no reason not to swing with everything here. This is way even far somehow our opponent with their one blue mana. You know, if they try to vapor snag our curse catcher or whatever, we we at least can make the Lord of Atlantis a three three and kill Sappy. But there you go, Modern Merfolk taking it down. That was actually a pretty good match, pretty close games. Not sure what happened in game one, uh, but both of those games were close. That was fun. Thank you for watching.